Scientist and proud Manchester High Girls, we want to show you some of the fascinating history of science teaching at MHSG. We'd also like to share with you the excitement that is investigation and discovery that is science in our school. Science is immensely popular. All girls in senior school learn biology, chemistry and physics to GCSE. And well over three quarters of sixth formers takes at least one science at AS, A2 or IB level. And let's not forget our keen, very young scientists in prep. Yes, in prep we start science in reception. We may only be four, but we've already started to investigate our world. to investigate and experiment sets in very early and there are plenty of outlets at Manchester High for the eager scientific mind. But in the mid-1800s educational prospects for women were gloomy and opportunities for girls to study science were limited. But we also know that the founders of Manchester High School for Girls thought differently and so we decided to investigate. Investigations have led us to the wealth of material in the school archive and we discovered some fascinating facts. So let's turn the clock back to when our school began in 1874. In the mid-19th century, women could not study properly at university. There were some girls' public schools, but they were mostly small and not very academic. The idea that girls deserved an academic education was highly controversial, and many influential people were openly against it. Our founders were flying in the face of public opinion, of the kind expressed by one indignant mother. Well, you know, I am anxious about Augusta's music. But it doesn't really matter about her arithmetic, does it? Her husband will be able to do all of her household accounts for her, you know. So our founder's decision to purchase two houses, numbers 369 and 371 Portland Terrace on Oxford Road, and start an academic school for girls, was a bold and very enlightened step. By the end of 1873, the founders were becoming very nervous that their vision of an academic school for girls would not happen. Only 20 pupils had enrolled. But, as it turned out, there was no need to worry. On January 19, 1874, the parents simply poured in. 60 girls enrolled and a handsome cab had to be ordered to take the heavy weight of the gold bought in as fees to the Union Bank on Oxford Street. Later, the houses on Portland Terrace were demolished to make way for new buildings for the University of Manchester. And here, where Manchester High first started, there now stands the Stockford Building, which houses Manchester Medical School. So, MHSG girls studying medicine in Manchester are closer to their roots than they might imagine. Our founders were adamant that Manchester High would give its pupils the very best education and fit them for any future which may be before them. Manchester High pioneered a mathematics curriculum which went far beyond traditional arithmetic in girls' schools at that time and the girls learned algebra, geometry and trigonometry. The governors and founders made sure that they secured the best academically qualified female mathematics teacher in the country for the school. She was Miss Sarah Woodhead, one of the first four women graduates in England, known as the Girton Pioneers. But the houses in Portland Terrace were simply too small for science laboratories, and proper science teaching had to wait until 1882, when the school moved to a new premises on Dover Street. Here at last, 
the school could build labs, and biology, chemistry and physics were introduced in quick succession. By 1900, the high school's second headmistress, Sarah Burstall, wrote, Science was the most popular subject among all the girls, there being more specialising in science than in all other subjects put together. In other words, the school seems rapidly to be becoming a science school. In 1895, the governors appointed Caroline Conyu to teach biology. She had been an outstanding pupil at Manchester High and had won a scholarship to study natural sciences at Newnham College, Cambridge. Under her enthusiastic leadership, the pursuit of science was a real joy. Miss Conyu persuaded the governors to build more urgently needed labs and two greenhouses. Soon the dynamic Miss Conyu had established quite a natural history collection in the greenhouse. Two salamanders called Romeo and Juliet. Two kittens. Two ants nests. A family of green lizards. A grass snake of fabulous Length. He was very good at escaping. The girls were even allowed a rabbit in the class. But last but not least, they even had a pet toad named Tom. great fun, but mm, I'm not sure we'd be allowed a grass snake nowadays. But thanks to this superb teaching, Manchester High girls went on to university to pursue studies and careers that were groundbreaking at the time. Manchester High girls Sarah Lowe and Dorothy Popplewell were the university's first women science graduates, and Catherine Chisholm, who later became the school doctor, was the first woman student to enter Manchester Medical School and to qualify there as a doctor. We feel a real part of this tradition. Our non was a pupil here and loved her science, as our mum came to Manchester High too and went on to study medicine. And so the conclusion of our investigation? Our founders and Miss Kanye were right. Science is a joy and so much part of our lives as young women setting out into the world.